Hi, Macy. So fight week. How are you feeling? What's the uh, level of emotion and excitement coming in here? I feel great. Paul Felder just made me cry on the broadcast interview, so we're good. <laughs> what was it that he touched upon? We like to do that here. No, it's all again. good. No, we were just we were just talking and like just talking about just like the journey and so. Yeah, it's hard to not get emotional when you're talking about that kind of stuff. Well, I think that's the thing that, you know, when fight weeks happen so often, you know, it's hard for us sometimes to keep track of everybody's journey. You know, we we tend to forget about it, but, you know, um, hoping to get the same emotion, you know, tell us about the journey. <laughs> no, it's just been a roller coaster, you know, a lot of ups, a lot of downs. I mean, I've had one amateur fight in my entire career, and then I had all pro fights, so I got to experience everything, not just on my pro career but in the UFC you know my first injury my first loss my first you know like everything so um it's just been it's been it's been a lot and I've been honored to be able to do it on like such a huge platform and in front of so many people and show share the journey with everybody so even though it can be emotional at times it's been really great and I can't wait to continue to show what the future holds yeah I was gonna say that's got to be the toughest proving ground to ever sort of find yourself and learn your way in this sport doing it on this level but that being said do you feel that having kind of had the trial by fire learning it and the biggest thing do you feel that that's given you a step up that others that maybe toiled in I want to say lesser promotions or whatever. Does it, does that, do you feel like that's given you a step up in experience and dealing with pressure? I feel like it does. It's definitely given me a, a step up, but it's also given me a lot of advantages in the sense of after my career, you know, after my fighting career, not just in having the advantage of, I know what it's like to have a loss in the, in, in the UFC. I know what it's like to have an injury in the UFC, but it's also, I can then go to other up and coming female fighters and be like, all right, well this, you know, like, and kind of explain it and help them and, and all of that. So I, I really look forward to not just using the advantage in, in the big stage, but also in the future, like fights for young, younger people coming up after me even though i'm like still really young <laughs> yeah okay. i know that's a ways out from now but yeah i was like unless my notes are wrong 23 i think yep. you're still pretty young and upcoming right now yeah. but when you say that when you want to help out are you talking about um coaching are you talking about want to be manager what sort of things are you are you thinking when you say you want to help those eventually coming up up on their own honestly i feel like the possibilities are endless, whether it's helping coach, whether it's being a training partner, whether it's being a mentor, whether it's being part manager, you know, I feel like the opportunities are so, so many opportunities and so open. Um, could be anything, you know, who knows? What is it like having, uh, I guess maybe it feels like it, um, uh, same opponent, but two camps in a row, in a sense. Uh, do things <clears throat> change or... Is it, are you at the point where you're just like, can we just get this fight over with so I can think about somebody else? You know, what's it like coming back into this yet again? No, I mean, obviously that has been a long camp, but I feel like I've been getting ready for her for like six, seven months. But on the flip side, it has been really good to just finally have a camp and be back fighting. Like, that's all I really wanted was like, as soon as I got hurt, I, I remember I looked at Danny and I was like, this is not supposed to happen. Like, this is not supposed to be going on right now. Like, I'm supposed to be fighting in December and I'm supposed to stay consistent. And I'm like, this is not supposed to happen. So for me to be able to fight finally is, is what's the most important, but also being able to have such a great opponent to get a finish against. Um, I'm really excited. Is that kind of how you see that this fight eventually is going to get? It's a finish or nothing else? Do you see that's that with yeah. her style and now is that just your goal because of how you fight or do you see something inherently in her that she gives up a, a finish maybe? a little a little bit of both I feel like she can easily be broken you know she doesn't like to get hit and that's exactly what we're gonna do we're gonna hit her and we're gonna break her we kind of we started a little bit talking about her let's I guess finish break her down for me for somebody that maybe doesn't understand or know her skill sets where is she dangerous and what sort of things are you expecting that she's gonna bring on Saturday night I mean, she's a fighter in the UFC, so obviously she has, <clears throat> sorry, she has a lot of skill. Um, but at the same time, everywhere that she has skill, we're better. You know, I'm better than her. Uh, in the striking, in the grappling, in the wrestling, I know that that's one of her stronger suits. So we're planning on being able to, if she tries to take us down, stop the takedown, beat her up. Um, or who knows, maybe we'll let her try to try to wrestle and, and we'll wrestle her back. So there, the, that, like I said, the possibilities are endless and I'm just planning on a finish. From when you first started, uh, or when it was first sort of arranged that you guys were going to fight, 
to now, did the did the the game plan for her change any, or did maybe what you wanted to try to get out of this change from when you first started this? No, I mean, because the plan is always to get better myself. You know, it's it's not about what is she going to do. It's about what we're going to do. You know, how are we going to impose our will? How are we going to beat her up? Um, and obviously, she hasn't had a fight since her last fight and since we were scheduled. So it's not like the plan can really change too much because, I mean, she's still the, the same fighter and still the same plan that we're planning for. So, um, no, just being ready and, and ready to dominate. She got her first victory via ground and pound her last fight where you have had a few. How do the two skill sets match up when it comes to maybe even just on paper when it comes to your ground and pound and your, your skill on the ground as opposed to what she's now starting to show? From my understanding, her finish on the ground and pound was against a girl who had, like, no jiu-jitsu. So that girl kind of just, like, laid there. Um, but good for her. You know, I'm glad she got a finish because it'll look better on me when I finish her. Um, but, yeah, I feel like our skill sets are, are – uh, my skill set is just better than hers <laughs> um, in the sense of, you know, I, I feel way more well-rounded than – and just mentally prepared. And like you said, you know, it's it's been some time, you know, nine months or whatever since you've had that last win. So is a win enough just to kind of get that win and just shake off the, the distance and the rust? Or do you want to go out there and is a decisive victory the only thing that you really want out of this one? A little bit of both. You know, obviously a win is going to be great. Um, but I haven't really been out like that. You know, I was still in the gym. I was still training. I've been training for a, a while now. Um so it'll be good to go out there, get a win, and then also just, just be able to perform. Fighters are always saying, man, how, how the camp and the training is just so much worse than the fight. They, they just, like, this is the fun part. Is, <clears throat> is, have you been missing the fun, and is this the fun part? Yeah, but also the journey is pretty great, too, you know? Like, being in the gym, you get to learn what works, what doesn't work, where you need to improve, where you need to um, maybe change up a little bit, you know? It, it's it's you're constantly growing in the gym so it's hard to not enjoy being in the gym when you're constantly evolving and learning um especially when you're in a gym that's full of such cool people um it's it's hard to not be happy you know like I, every time i go to the gym I'm, I'm pretty much in love with going to the gym like you look forward to going there rather than like oh i gotta go train again you know it's no i don't have to go train i get to go train again you know um every day we get to wake up and, and go do what we love and it's it's such an amazing thing you know there's so many other jobs out there like going and working at a desk every single day would suck and so I'm so glad that I get to go to a gym work out in my pajamas and hang out with fun people and just be the healthiest me that I can possibly be so why not that's awesome spoken like a true gym rat would you say yeah, you're a gym yeah. rat I am definitely a gym rat <laughs> um looking at the the with a win here, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't look at the rankings. Should this break you into the top 10, you believe? Sure. Why not? I feel like for a while there, they were, you were, like the UFC was pushing you very, very hard, you know, trying to promote you and stuff. And I think that was part of what, you know, you've dealt with that pressure as well. Do you think with a good decisive victory that that push will pick right back up? I do. You know, I don't feel like the UFC stopped trying to push me. I think it was, you know, they saw that I got injured and that I had a loss. You know, it's going to take me a little bit to get back, and, and I feel like I'm right back on track. So I'm just going to continue to do what I do best. That's put on performances, and I'm going to know that they're going to continue to promote me and, and take care of me. Give me your thoughts on the, the division. What do you think of the state of the women's division right now is? Honestly, I haven't taken too much of a look. <laughs> I've been so focused on just improving and, and grinding and getting better and focusing on fighting this, um, this girl and, and just on to the next. So we'll take a look at it in soon. <laughs> um, I don't think I asked you, but, but goals for 2022, what other sort of things are you setting for yourself for this year? What are you hoping to get out of this year? Just dominating. I would love to get obviously get this win and then on to the next one, get another win and continue on i know my sister my sister just had a baby so after this fight i'm gonna go out and visit um so i'm a new auntie in 2022 oh, so that's, that's awesome. exciting but i mean other than that i mean life is great and i just want to keep it going good are you the kind of aunt that's going to spoil 
the uh, <laughs> I already <laughs> niece or nephew? It's a niece, and yeah, I, I think I've gone shopping almost every single day. Every day, my Amazon cart is full, <laughs> and I hit order, and I'm like, there's probably five boxes sitting in my my house right now. <laughs> Just imagine what you could do with a nice performance bonus, right? Right, right? I need that. Well, I guess last thing for me, keys to the victory. What sort of things need to happen to make sure that you get your arm raised in victory on Saturday? Just being me, you know, I'm dangerous when I'm happy and I'm so happy right now. So I'm super dangerous and she's going to be broken and I'm just planning on dominating. Best of luck. Thank you. Hey, Macy. Hi. Uh, I think losses are felt more so in boxing than MMA, but I recently spoke to a few fighters over there, uh, Alexis Rocha and Erickson Lubin, who lost earlier in their careers and have been on strong runs since. And they both said that those early setbacks were kind of a blessing in disguise, whether they learn a bit more about themselves when it comes to maturity or having a hungrier attitude in the ring when the lights are uh, on. Uh, what's been the biggest things you've learned about yourself, either as a woman or a fighter, um, from the back-to-back -back losses now that you've rebounded with a W? And when you're speaking to us right now, it seems like you're really confident of not just winning, but performing well. Uh, has there been like a shift in things you've you understand more in, as a technical part of the game or anything like that? Absolutely. I mean, not just losing early on in your career, but losing so young, you know, like I have such a long career ahead of me. Um, so for me to be able to have lost and also suffered such a major injury, you know, like tearing your ACL is no like minor injury. That, that's a major surgery. I was out for a whole year. So having a layoff at such a young age, having a loss at such a young age, um, and having to deal with the mental battle of learning how to train when you're not able to train, how to stay mentally sharp when you're unable to train. Um, also, just like the, I feel like the mental warfare and the mental side of it is so huge and so important. And then just also like being healthy inside, not not just outside. You know, like us fighters, you know, we we train and we perform and we we exercise so much. And then our bodies are physically healthy, but are they internally healthy? You know, so being at peace, being happy, being mentally strong. So those are all such incredible lessons that I've been able to learn so early that it has taught me so much. And I know that it's going to help me perform in the next fight, in the next fight, in the next fight. And it's only going to get stronger, you know, like that was the beginning. And so I'm just now reaping the benefits from all of that. And so I can't wait to continue to reap the benefits. What kind of the preparations have gone into like the mental side and how can you prepare for that mental warfare? It seems like that's, you know, you can train on the physical side and the technical side in the gym, but is it something that you only kind of learn from experience when it comes to the mental aspect? I do. I feel like for me, it started out with just when I, when I obviously I tore my leg, uh, the first part was I started reading, you know, I talked to my coaches. I was like, Hey, any books that you recommend, any, any books that I should be reading, any of this, any of that. So I started out with just reading and obviously, um, watching documentaries, watching some movies, watching some or listening to some um, podcasts. There's different things, obviously, that you can do just to feed your mind. Um, and that's what I was able to do. But as I started to do that, I started to um, communicate more with, uh, obviously, I, I've talked a lot about Eric Thomas and Sherry Riley. They've been a huge part of my mental, um, my mental training, I guess you could say, and, and just in like life. Um, and they've taught me so much in terms of how to shift your mindset to, you know, how can I perform the best? How can I be the best? How can I continue to use this to elevate other, other aspects of my life? Um, so it started out with reading and then it started, I actually started working with them one-on-one -on -one as life coaches and mental training coaches. And that's something that I feel like every fighter, every athlete should have, you know, like it's easy for us to say that we're like, yeah, I'm confident, I'm ready. But at the same time, there's so much that goes into being a professional athlete, not just a fighter, but the professional athlete at the highest level of training. You know, it's, it's a constant battle of eat, sleep, uh, recover, like everything plays a part. And so that puts a lot of stress on your body and, and, and you need that mental training too, to continue to train, even when you're not able to physically train. Um, so that's been the biggest part for me, just in coming back and and learning how to how to train without physically training too. Yeah. And the result against Maverick seemed to be a little bit disputed at the time. Because of that, do you feel like you've got maybe a, more of a point to prove this weekend that you need to go out there uh, and make a statement to recapture all that kind of momentum you had uh, pre-pandemic, I suppose? 
No, I mean, my bank account told me that I, uh, that I won, so I was like, I was good with that, you know, and, and I know that I got my hand raised, and I went out there and performed as best as I possibly could. So um, I know that I won that fight, and I didn't take it as a loss, even though, you know, I know there's a lot of haters. I didn't read a single comment on, <laughs> on what, I, what I won or what I lost. I know that there was a lot of, a lot of hate because I had some of my teammates being like, yo, your comments are crazy, and, and I was like, oh, okay, cool. Um, but I, I got a win, and I'm continuing on with another win. You wouldn't walk that one back. You feel like if a victory this weekend kind of put, put you in a different, um, uh, put you in a different direction. Maybe looking at other people in the rankings. Would I take that one back? Would you, would you take a rematch with Maverick, or do you think you, you, you're going in a different direction if you, if, if and when you win this weekend? I wouldn't say I would never fight her again, but I just don't feel like it makes sense. You know, like we're both young. I already beat her. Uh, maybe on later on down in our careers when we're both already like top prospects because right now we're up and coming prospects, you know, like she's trying to build her career. I'm trying to build my career. We're both young. Why are we, you know, why not match us up with someone, you know, Maran uh, sorry, Montana's, you know, been there around, you know? So I feel like that for me is a better fight. Her fighting someone like Montana would be a better fight. Um, rather than like, she just fought Sabina Mazo beat her and Sabina got cut, you know, like, so many young fighters are fighting each other. And I definitely like to see who gets sent to the top. Um, but for me, I'm going to continue on winning and, and doing what I do. And if we get matched up again, we get matched up again, and I'll beat her again. Makes sense. Uh, best of luck on Saturday. Thank you.